What's good guys, it's your girl Keisha Ariel and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm finally gonna be answering some of your questions that you have been asking me for the past two years regarding my DIY hair growth masks, which I have shared countless times on my channel. So let's get right into this Q&A. Okay, so the first question we have here is how do you know if your hair has too much protein? Now, I did answer this question um, way back about two years ago when I was doing my hair growth pharmacy um, segment on my channel. So what I will do is leave a link right here for you to go and check out so you can have a little bit more um, detailed answer because obviously if I was to provide the answer here, it would kind of be a little bit quick so if you want to find out how you can determine if your hair has too much protein definitely go on over here and check it out but just to kind of give you a quick quick like indication and um, your hair will feel too hard but definitely check this video out right here because i did give you guys a test that you can perform in order to find out if your hair has too much protein so check it out right here so the next question we have here is when making your hair mask do you use warm water and the answer to that question is yes i do use warm water now i know i have noticed that when i was making those videos that i wasn't necessarily saying that i use warm or cold water so i understand that question there it's very valid and the answer to that is yes i do use warm water and i just think warm water just allows the um the the oils and the um ingredients the powders to just mesh so much more easier as opposed to cold water now you can actually try using cold water if you wish like there's no right or wrong way but if you think you know what cold or warm it does the same thing that's up to you but me personally i always just use um warm water i just prefer it that way <laughs> So the next question we have here is how often do you use these DIY hair masks? Now, um, I use these DIY hair masks on a monthly basis. And as you guys would have seen in my, one of my most recent videos where I was talking about, you know, um, you know, helping my hair to grow back because, you know, I am going through postpartum hair loss or I was going through postpartum hair loss. And on that journey, I have changed up my, um my routine to include these diy hair masks again because when i checked out my performance of my hair when i was using it it was you know very good so i have decided to include it back into my routine and i use it once a month moving on the next question we have here is do you feel the need to follow up with a deep conditioning treatment after using your diy hair mask no, I definitely don't feel the need to do that um, because if you check my video out right here, which I'll link for you to go and check out, um, it's about how to use um, conditioners. And I spoke on the different um, purpose of each conditioner. And a deep conditioner is usually used to, um, you know, give your hair extra nourishment, etc., as well as moisture. And when you think about a DIY hair mask where you're using like the henna, the amla, all those other Ayurvedic, Ayurvedic <laughs> um, powders, they are packed with a lot of nutrients and antioxidants, etc. So to go and do another deep conditioning because i kind of use that as my deep conditioning treatment so i don't necessarily feel the need to do another deep conditioning treatment on top of it so the next question we have here is will this hair mask leave a tint on the hair or skin now this person is asking this question because clearly i use henna in my um, diy hair mask and from my personal experience, no, it has not left any tint on my hair or my skin. But I have to say, um, on my skin, like say if I'm mixing the, um, the hair mask with my hands, I will see like a little tint on that. Although I can say that um, sometimes when you go to say wash your hair again, and you was to rinse it or whatever, you will see that there was still some residue in your hair. Maybe that's the case for me because I have locks, but um, 
I wouldn't necessarily say that would be the case if you have loose natural hair but I think I was experiencing some of those leftover residue because like I probably didn't rinse it out my locks properly but all in all the answer to that is no it doesn't tint your hair well from my personal experience it hasn't left any tint on my hair or my scalp and the next question we have here is does tea rinses henna black strap molasses etc cause damage to your hair when using it for coloring the hair definitely not henna and all of those that are just listed don't necessarily cause damage to your hair now i did a video on um you know dyeing your hair or coloring your hair when it comes to using like store-bought like dyes etc so i'll link that right here for you to go and check out to understand how that damages your hair now when it comes to henna and stuff like that henna and blackstrap molasses um and those type of things whether you use it using it as a rinse or a mask or however you choose to use it it don't necessarily damage the hair it's one of the most safer option when it comes to dyeing your hair because when you use dyes you are using an agent which is trying to force your cuticles open to strip away the natural colors now when you're using henna and stuff like that say you're steaming your hair or whatever you know that's more a natural way of raising the um the cuticles in order for um this natural um ingredient to get into you know get underneath the the, um, the cuticle to give the color so again i did go into more details in this video right here so definitely check it out but to give you the overall answer henna does not damage your hair at all when it comes to using it for coloring it's one of the safest and natural ways of coloring your hair and also i will link another video right here that i did on henna so definitely go ahead and check that out so you could learn a little bit more on how henna actually benefits the hair and the final question i have here today is is it true that if you dye your hair to a color similar to your natural hair it's not as damaging and again i did touch on this particular question in the video that i already linked above so definitely go ahead and check it out but to give you a general answer to um to that question it still damages your hair so whether it's not as damaging you are still causing damage to your hair and you know i don't know why people say oh you know it's not as damaging like that makes it better you're still damaging your hair because say you are you know you use it this on this occasion for the first time oh it didn't really damage my hair that much so guess what when it comes time to reapply that color you're gonna do a little bit more damage okay and then you go do it again for your third color another little bit more damage and so on and so forth so eventually your hair will be damaged so that's just a quick answer to that but then again as i said definitely check the links out it might be up here not might i will definitely link, leave some links here and i'll also leave it in the description below so go ahead and check it out to educate yourself a little bit more on how to make sure that your hair is as healthy as possible and you know you can feel beautiful <laughs> okay guys so that's it for today i hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did then please be sure to like comment share and subscribe if you are not already subscribed so until next time i will see you right back here on my channel bye